Nectar's keeping you up and letting you down? Nectar's Labor Day sale is delivering our sweetest deal ever right to your door so you can try out an award-winning Nectar mattress in your home today. That's right. Sleep on it. Risk-free for a full year with Nectar's unbeatable 365-night trial. And with our unheard-of forever warranty, you know everything's going to be all right. Right now, you can save big with 33% off everything and as little as $34 a month in free shipping. But a deal this sweet won't last. Visit Nectarsleep.com to get yours today. Tomorrow on ET, we close out our back-to-school week with Breakfast Club Secrets. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Hi, guys. What you never knew about the movie's off-camera romances. We were an item. Make sure you check that out. We have one more thing to show you before we leave. Good night. Happening now. Five San Antonio police officers injured by gunfire in less than a week. Now the head of the police union calling on Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez to resign. Powerful comments from Danny Diaz coming up. Sasha Scar on trial for the murder of a local known rapper. A jury found her guilty, and now she faces up to life in prison. We're in the courtroom with all the details. Meteorological summer comes to a close today with more records broken. We'll talk about it in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And we start with the head of the San Antonio Police Union calling for the resignation of Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez. This after back to back to back shootings involving police and known criminals who remained on the street. And Danny Diaz telling our Dylan Collier the Bear County justice system has become a revolving door that has increasingly placed the public in harm's way. In his well over three decades of being a police officer, Danny Diaz has never endured a week quite like this. Five San Antonio police officers struck by gunfire while trying to arrest armed suspects. Three of them being um, second generation police officers, it's, 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 uh, it's a horrible feeling, right? Leaves you hollow. Diaz this week has directed significant criticism to Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez, calling him soft on violent crime. The DA's office blamed a flawed bond system for why suspect Jesse Garcia was free when he was accused of shooting three SAPD officers last week, critically injuring two of them. Yesterday, 40-year-old Michael Kirkland fired at drivers and shot an SAPD officer before he was killed by police. Records show at the time of his death, Kirkland was wanted on six warrants, including for aggravated assault of a public servant, and had avoided being convicted in any of his last seven criminal cases, a circumstance Gonzalez attributed to a lack of help for prosecutors from people involved in Kirkland's cases. All we can do is, is, is uh, continue to implore uh, the public uh, to uh, to cooperate, to continue to plead to to the victims uh, of crime, to the witnesses that are that are, that have witnessed these crimes to to come forward. Then late last night, a fifth officer shot while police tried to arrest a burglary suspect who ran from a stolen vehicle. Sources say the man who was killed by police was armed with a gun and had been criminally charged in at least five previous cases since August of last year. Are we at a point where you think he should resign? Absolutely. If the job that he was elected to do uh, is not a job that he can do, uh, then he doesn't belong there. Diaz says he has gone as far as to create his own spreadsheet of people recently arrested in San Antonio who have then benefited from what he called the DA's selective process for prosecuting cases. He can make whatever excuse he wants to make or, or, or blame who he wants to blame and point fingers in different directions. But bottom line is it's, it's under his uh, regime. We asked the district attorney's office to respond to Diaz calling for the resignation of Gonzalez. The DA released a statement late this afternoon that reads in part, the San Antonio PD statistics show an overall decline in violent crime. Dangerous criminals are being locked up. Our homicide conviction rates are the highest they've been in at least 12 years. Every one of the talented people who work in this office is entirely committed to our mission of upholding justice and keeping our community safe. I look forward to continuing to work with and lead this incredibly dedicated group of people. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you for that report, Dylan. We do have an update for you on the officer who was shot during yesterday's deadly shooting on I-10. According to Police Chief William McManus, the officer is recovering in the hospital right now. He tells us that Officer Jay Owen was shot in the arm during the interstate shootout yesterday. 
Owen is an eight-year veteran of the department and is part of the street crimes unit. McManus says Owens is doing well. New at five, after a little more than two hours of deliberation, a jury has found Sasha Scare, Scar guilty of murder. Back in January of 2021, Scar shot and killed San Antonio rapper Martel Durowan through his apartment door. Scar had no reaction after that verdict was read. This afternoon, the punishment phase of the trial began. No opening argument arguments were given, and it went straight into testimony. Coming up at 6, more on that testimony as we hear from Durowan's parents for the first time. Scar is facing 5 to 99 years or life in prison. The jury will deliberate punishment tomorrow. A man telling police he was on his way home early this morning when he hit a woman who was crossing the street on the west side. That woman died at the scene. San Antonio police say the woman was walking in the 3900 block of Culebra near Hortensia Avenue at around 2.30 in the morning when she was hit. The driver did stop and called for help. Police say the driver was not impaired at the time of the incident and appears that this was indeed an accident. No charges are expected against the driver. Police say that where this happened, there is no designated crosswalk. And school districts across San Antonio say they're proud of their improving star test scores. But school district leaders say that growth won't be reflected in better ratings. In fact, several Texas school districts are actually suing the Texas Education Agency for changing the system. Camilia Juarez with why San Antonio school district ratings will actually go down despite their students improving. In 2022, a district could have gotten an A rating and in 2023 actually done better, shown progress, but will receive a B rating. Dr. Jody Spore um, is in charge of the Southside more ISD more curriculum. She when says the Texas Education Agency folks, has moved the goalpost for the district-wide accountability math. rating. A poor rating affects a district's funding and can draw negative attention from the state. So now the scores are going to change. and. I might have won the game then, but now I might not win the game because you changed my three points to two and my two points to one. So that's frustrating. Now star test scores will carry less weight and college career military readiness and graduation rates will impact a district score more. School district leaders argue it's not fair because graduation rates are retroactive. It doesn't help kids. It doesn't help districts and it seems incredibly punitive. So for that, we're disappointed that they chose to do it that way instead of giving us time to grow into that, which they've done in the past. Dr. Janice Jordan, in charge of Northside ISD curriculum, says because of the changing system, Northside ISD will have to pay closer attention to career certifications, dual credit classes, and students joining the military. We know the how the game has changed, or at least we, there's a whole host of things that we'll look at perhaps flagging earlier. We have all kinds of systems um, that, you know, we use as red flags. Last year's star testing was different, more open-ended questions, tighter timing, and the test was on a computer instead of paper. Despite the testing changes, Southside ISD and Northside ISD say they saw star scores improve in math and reading. And we're so proud of our, our, our teachers and our families and our students um, because uh, those gaps closing pre and post um, COVID, um, we're very proud of that. And, and we want to continue. Because of the changes from the TEA, school districts are starting the year without knowing their accountability rating. That's that letter grade. And they won't know that until the end of September. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Now, the Texas Education Agency says it cannot comment because of the pending litigation, but it has sent districts what if ratings using the previous accountability scoring. We have the full statement on our website, ksat.com. New at 5, September 1st. That's tomorrow, and more than 700 new laws go into effect. Among them, the removal of taxes on everyday health items like menstrual products and diapers. But there's a catch. They're only tax free when you buy them online. During the last legislative session, state lawmakers on both sides of the aisle voted in favor of making these items tax free. Staffers with the Diaper Bank and other local organizations helped create this bill to help parents afford the items that have taken a real hit in these inflationary times.
Not only can we, if we have to purchase the items to give to you know, our clients, we can save a little bit of money there and it also helps with our donors who want to provide more products to us as well and just everybody, our clients in general. To take a look at the full list of items that will be tax-free when bought online, you can head over to KSAT.com. In contrast, a new state law that would restrict drag performances in the presence of minors will not take effect as planned tomorrow. A federal judge issuing a temporary restraining order today, stopping Senate Bill 12 from going into law for the time being. This decision comes after LGBTQ advocates protest to the law, arguing that it endangers livelihoods and free speech and would affect drag shows in particular. But supporters say the law would only levy criminal penalties on businesses that allow sexually oriented performances of any kind in the presence of children. A permanent order to keep the law from going to effect, though, is expected in the next few days. And we broke down several other notable laws that go into effect tomorrow to watch and find out more. Or if you want to read that list, just scan this QR code on your screen right now. In other news making headlines, police in South Carolina say the fatal shooting of a college student who knocked on the wrong door over the weekend was justified. After knocking on that door, Nicholas Donofrio broke the window and kicked the door in. A woman inside the home called 911 telling dispatch someone was trying to break into her home. And then a man inside the home got a gun and fired, hitting and killing the University of South Carolina student. Donofrio had just moved into an off-campus frat house that was on the same street as the home. Police say he tried to enter. Former President Donald Trump pleads not guilty in the Georgia election subversion case. He entered the former or the formal plea through court filings instead of being arraigned in prison. This marks the fourth time Trump has pleaded not guilty to the criminal charges since leaving the White House. In this case, he is charged with racketeering in connection with his alleged efforts to overturn the presidential election results in Georgia. No official date has been set for that trial. We're taking a look outside with your traffic authority cameras at I-35 in San Marcos, and you can see traffic is going slow. No real reason for the slowdown, but it is rush hour. Maybe it's the heat, the triple digits. Everybody's just slowing down right, a energy. little bit, right? Yeah, we've had enough of this. 102, our high temperature for the day today that misses the record by just one degree. Overall across our area, triple digits for the most part. A few exceptions, Fredericksburg, Rock Springs, Ozona, and Dryden just below 100. But the rest of us feeling the heat and the triple digits. And you look at our... Weather watcher temperatures right now. Warren's backyard in Del Rio, 102, 97 Leon Springs, Panna Maria and Floresville at 104, Myco 98, Bull Verde 99 and Windcrest 100 degrees. So really it's more of the same. And as we go through the evening, a clearing sky, but the sea breeze kicks in again, southeast at five to 15. So that humidity is going to spike. The humidity returns. We'll talk about the records broken this summer and this August in just a bit. Thank you so much, Adam. Still ahead. They tug on your heartstrings on social media only to pull cash from your pocket. How some social media scammers post that make you pay. Next. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. A tear-filled message from the family of Soraya Perez, who was just six years old when she was shot and killed. Today, the man responsible for her death took a guilty plea. How long Andrew Elizondo will stay behind bars for that 2021 Mother's Day shooting? San Antonio will now require its contractors to provide breaks and water for workers out in the heat, but not everyone is covered here. We'll explain. Plus. It's not enough just to send our, our children to school to get a quality education, but we want to make sure that they're safe and secure as well. That is the director of the Texas School Safety Center. It's been around a long time, but not many people know what they do. We head to San Marcos to find out and introduce you to the Chief of School Safety and Security for Texas, a position created after the Robb Elementary School shooting. What is his role? It's all in a new case that explains coming up on the News at 6. Thanks for that, Myra. Looking forward to it. Now, the pictures, they tug at your heartstrings, but posts about missing children or injured or lost pets on social media may not be what they seem. In fact, they may be a trick. 
Kitel Veneer Slides Marilyn Moritz explains you could be sharing a scam and not even know it. Scrolling social media, puppy dog eyes like this catch your eye and heart. Someone is desperately searching for the owner of a dog just found injured on the side of the road. Please bump and share. You feel compelled to share. But hold on, it's likely fake. It is a bait and switch where they'll try to get as many people to share a lost pet, a missing person, or missing item. Even missing children. We searched the words, this is the most recent picture of my son. We found one, two, three, four photos of a boy named Tyler, but different last names. So what's going on? Scammers prey on emotions and urgency to get you to share their post. And once it's spread, they edit the post to something completely different, like a fake ad with a malicious link. And your friends buy in thinking you support that. It's not always obvious either. One viewer said she shared a Barbie movie quote and days later, the post was changed to an ad for a quilt website. And a parent on a new group school page sees ads like this. The link appears to be a shirt order form, but it's fake. Scammers want you to click on the link to steal your money or information. So to keep from helping the scammers. We'll pause, take a breath. Before you share, consider the source verify that person is a real person. A new profile or one with few friends may be fake. And if comments are turned off, that's a red flag too. Bottom line, sharing isn't always a good thing. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Well, there goes the idea of sharing is caring. Exactly, you always gotta be on your toes nowadays. It's unfortunate too, because yeah. you, you don't know which ones are real and which ones aren't. Yeah, we know this is real. Triple digits <laughs> again today. It's been real yes, for again it's, today. it's too real. <laughs> And, you know, meteorological summer, June, July, August is coming to a close today. Of course, tomorrow being September 1st. And so we've got some data for you. First, I want to get to our temperature forecast because it's going to be more of the same. 101 tomorrow and Saturday, triple digits even Sunday and Labor Day. And then, whoa, hold on, buckle up. We could maybe be 99 for the high by Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So with a high of 102 today after a morning low of 75, our average temperature, August 2023, 90.6 degrees. Not only is that the hottest August on record, but the hottest month ever recorded here in San Antonio. Previously, the previous hottest month was August back in 2020. 11 at 90.6 degrees and you look at the summer as a whole. I know there's a lot on the screen. I'm going to get out of the way. You can take this in and ingest it. Uh, those black numbers indicate the high temperature for that calendar day. But you look at the numbers across June, July and August, and there's just a handful of days where we were actually below average those blue colored days. And that was mostly in early June when we were pulling out of our our rainy pattern that we had over the spring. So not only the hottest month in August on record, but actually the hottest summer on record. And now we're at 64, 100 degree days so far this year. We'll keep tallying them up as I showed you in the forecast. The previous record, 59, that was back in 2009. So we'll keep adding those up. Unfortunately, with all the heat comes dry conditions and lack of rain. And you look at the drought monitor, good chunk of Texas falling into not just drought, but extreme and exceptional drought, especially up I-35 north of San Antonio and up 281 into the hill country as well. There is actually a little glimmer of hope, and that's Maverick County. This includes the rainfall from Tropical Storm Harold, by the way. And in Maverick County and along the Rio Grande, where we saw a little bit more rain, not even considered ab abnormally dry in Eagle Pass. That's the one exception in our area. Let's talk about our overall weather pattern. Big Blue H, the upper level high, it's over in New Mexico. We actually have a disturbance in the atmosphere. This red L here, this upper level low near New Orleans. This is going to be drifting over Texas, but really it's going to be inconsequential. It's not going to do any good to really help us stir up any showers and storms. So pretty much a non-starter there when it comes to rain from that upper level disturbance. Otherwise, upper level high, it takes over again. It'll be centered off to the west of us, but still influencing our weather. Rain chances, unfortunately, I know it's bleak, 0%, but I do think next week we could have some coastal showers popping up in the afternoons. 7 a.m. tomorrow, 75 degrees by noon. We're at 96 already, sunny, and 101 
tomorrow afternoon, so another triple digit day. Divine 101 along with Hondo, Bulverde 97, Floresville 102. Sunny, dry conditions will continue. Kind of bleak, huh? <laughs> Zeros across the board. <laughs> and we'll talk about fire danger hey, coming look, up at 99 is coming around. That's Come true, on that's now. True. Silver lining. Thanks for that, Adam. <laughs> All right, Larry. Uh, Reek, a former Roadrunners DB, is now in the NFL, and he's getting some high praise from his new peers. Yeah, because he had such a fantastic rookie season. I mean, he was in the running for Defensive Player of the Year, but of course I went to Sauce Gardner with the New York Jets. Tariq, who now goes by Reek, is getting ready for his second season. He definitely wants to be the best. And Cowboys wide receiver Jalen Tolbert is very excited for week one. Coming up. Why did you decide to go by uh, Reek instead of Tariq? Because uh, all my friends call me Reek, and it was just kind of cool. So I was just like, okay, say less. <laughs> Tariq Woolen is now going by Reek, and he says the name change is mom approved in big board sports. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Jalen Tolbert is entering his second season in the league, and he's really looking to make some noise. The boys drafted him in the third round last year, 88th overall. And as a rookie, he appeared in eight games and had one start. Now, last season, Tolbert was inactive for week one. This year, he's not, and he's ready to go. It's special, and, you know, we're not there yet, and I got to keep working. But uh, so far, you know, it, it's, it's going good. And like you said, I wasn't able to gear up, you know, week one last year. So it's going to be a special moment to go out there week one, you know, Sunday night football versus, you know, a rival opponent and, and be able to go out there and do what's asked of me. And it's some sad news to pass along. Gil Brandt, the Cowboys VP of player personnel from 1960 to 1988, passed away today at the age of 91. The Hall of Fame scout helped build the Cowboys from an expansion franchise into a Super Bowl contending team. Seattle Seahawks cornerback Tariq Wohn is getting ready for his second NFL season. Now, he's been slowed down at training camp following a knee procedure, but he says he's on the mend and he's looking to come back better than ever. He now goes by Reek instead of Tariq. Now, either way, he's a dominant corner and now he wants to take the next step to become one of the best uh honestly i feel like last year you know I, people didn't think i could play in this league or they would have thought i was a special teams guy but i, I feel like i had proved that to them but also uh this season i just want to prove to myself that i'm the best corner in the nfl and i feel like i am one of the best of cornerbacks in the nfl what's the next step for you do you think as a player as a cornerback just to improve what do you want to get better out of this year like I said, just the playbook and just slowing the game down more. You know, I'm a fast person, but it's a difference when you can save all your speed and just play with your mental abilities. And I feel like that's what Sherm did. You know, Sherm wasn't the fastest guy, but he knew football in and out. And I feel like that's something I want to do, learn football in and out. That way, you know, when those plays do come and interceptions do come, that's the only time I want to run, you know. Reek has ranked number 76 in the NFL's top 100 players of 2023. We'll be right back after the break.